Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Ecom and Beyond with my co-host, Pittsburgh. What up? Today, we're going to talk about buying strategies. How maybe your thought process from year year one, or if you start, if you're starting to begin, you know, reselling now, change, and what things you want to do, or what things you're doing now, or what things you want to do. But first. Let's see what we have in the chat today. First, we got Steven Scroggins in the house. What's going on, Steven? Uh, he was actually the first four people we had to chat. Actually, the first five out of six. So good morning to you, Steven Scroggins. Appreciate you being here, my man. Um, we got Hotness Thrift, or Hot Mess Thrift, I should say. Good to see you this morning. Got Larry Lafferty in the house. Good to see you, Larry. Glad you're here. We got Matt Man in the house. Good to see you, Matt Man. Sleepless hustler. He knows all them famous superheroes, guys. Check him out. Got Alexis in the in the house. Good to see you, Alexis. Glad you're here with us. We have no money G. What's up, Greg? Good to see you, my man. Got Matt BK Venning and Flipping. Did you hit your six hundred, Matt? Hopefully you yep. did. He did. Yep. Nice. What's up, dude? We got uh, Anthony in the house, bluegrass picker. Good to see you, man. I bet you're still on cloud nine after them Chiefs won the Super Bowl. Chiefs. They scored. They, I needed two more points out of that game, or I'd have really loved the Chiefs, but <laughs> I'd have been $175 richer. Yep. Got a uh, Philly picker in the house. Good to see you, man. Who else is here? Got Johnny here, Cajun Roots reseller. Good to see you, Johnny. Got uh, my Myra in the house. Good to see you, Myra. Lisa C. Good morning, Lisa. We have Ray in the house. What's up, Sand Dollar? Kelly the Ecom Mom Ward. Good morning. Morning, Lisa. Good to see you. Got the bargain effect with us. What's going on, Tommy? Good morning to you, bud. DC sells the master of the license plate with us. Good morning, D. John in the house. What's going on, my man? Says he's just stopping by for some brownie points. He's off to the post office and Chick fil A for tea. So what's up? There you go. Shane M in the house. Good morning, Shane. Looks like uh, Matt's having another premiere today. Said he would love for everyone to check it out. You want to put what time it is, Matt, or even drop a link to it. Feel for oh, okay. He says twelve thirty Arizona time. So, um, guessing maybe that's three thirty Eastern. Could be wrong. Uh, I don't know what time Arizona time is. I just assume Arizona time is like California time, but I could be yeah, wrong. That might be uh, Central, maybe. Gotcha. See who else is with us today. Got Tracy with us. Tease flips. Good morning to you. Got Gina. Q Lime kisses. Good morning. Got Paul Gate City Picker. Congratulations again, Paul. You won the uh, brownie points slash broski points giveaway yesterday. So. You'll want to get a hold of either myself or Nate to let us know if you would prefer to come do a takeover show for the morning show, or if you'd prefer to just like tell us what you want the morning show to be. That was the prize that you won. So it just depends on if you want to come on or you don't want to come on. Mac man said, uh, congrats on 700. Thanks man. Appreciate it. Yeah, my man's getting closer to that 1K. Let's get him there, guys. Jacob Michael's in the house. Good morning. We have CEOs of Sales with us. What's up, Lisa? We have a Brandon in the house, Resell King. What's going on, my man? Eric Bischoff. What's up, dude? Got the Fluky in the house. Good morning, man. Jennifer Hayes. Good morning to you. Yeah, you did win, Paul. It was announced at the very end of yesterday's show. Your uh, your one brownie point 
got you the winner. Every yep. entry has a good shot at winning. So, yep. Steampunk Town, good morning to you. Crockers, lockers, what's going on, man? I'm not sure if you got my email yesterday. Um, one, the first one I sent you was sent back because I guess I must have keyed it in wrong or whatnot. So I tried it again. Hopefully, you did get it. Uh, Eric's Eric Bischoff says, I'm curious, did you guys gain subs after being on Grimes? Yeah, we did. I think we both gained about 50 or so subs, maybe a little bit more. Yeah, there were, I got some, I don't know if, I got, I definitely got some before, but I don't think I was linked or anything in there, so that might have been just random luck, but, uh, yeah, I got, uh, I think I got like 70 or so, something like that. There you go. Pretty awesome. If anyone's, uh, here that uh, saw us on Grimes Bonds. Thank you for coming in this morning. We appreciate it. We do a morning show Monday through Friday on either my channel or Pittsburgh's channel. If you didn't sub to him on the Grimes' show, uh, his link is in the description. We talk all things reselling, storage lockers, uh, Amazon, eBay, uh, so on and so forth. We just hit different topics every morning. Uh, we have a Facebook group which I'll put that in, a, in the chat here in a second. So this way, if you uh, you know want something as a topic or you know just want to be part of uh, our Facebook group, then you're more than welcome to join. It's private, so just uh, uh, click add, and then we'll we'll add you right in. But, yeah, definitely suggest you guys join in the group. Um, we do plan to use it for more and more things as. You know, we kind of advance, so make sure you're in there now, and you don't miss out on anything that goes on there. Also, we are going to be doing our uh, reseller meetup, too, as well. So if you're in a surrounding state or maybe you want to take a longer drive, uh, it's in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Uh, there's going to be a bunch of people, including Grimes, coming out that way. We might even have some other uh, bigger uh, storage um storage people coming in i don't want to say for sure because they, they haven't said for sure so i don't want anyone to think that someone's coming you know drive all that way and then they don't show up so uh but we're going to probably be doing a um a live or a working hangout slash like we're going to try and plan it all during the same time probably probably saturday probably I'd say probably either saturday or thursday probably one of these days this week uh, so we can start really, um, you know, concentrating on what's going on with that. So this way we can plan everything accordingly, try to get you guys some hotel rates if you guys are going to stay for more than one day or if you're just driving in, then you wouldn't need one. But uh, there's Comic-Con coming into town uh, for the weekend, too. So that's going to be uh, yeah, a pretty cool thing as well. And uh, we're just going to have a lot of fun and, you know, Get to know one another a little better and uh, do a little do a little sourcing. Maybe see some of the the, the great uh, uh, sites of Pittsburgh. Yep, definitely planning to do at least one fun touristy type activity per day, and then the rest of the day is going to be full of you know food, fun, and uh, sourcing. So it'll definitely be a a good time. Uh, the idea would be that you guys could actually make some money on the trip. Um, I know that Bargain Effect, Tommy, and Destiny, um, Shamrock Pixie, they're going to be with us. Uh, Kip Flip and Mama's going to be with us. And I know Tommy's planning to bring a trailer to uh, basically source and make some money. So anyone else interested in that, I will have an itinerary that we're going to put together that I'll be able to share with you guys as time approaches. Uh, so you can plan whether you're just coming for the one day meetup or you want to be here for uh, several days, you'll be able to see exactly what we're planning to do each and every day. So you can plan for whatever you want to do. Yeah, I just want to thank everyone for being a part of the 700 people that uh, actually subscribe to my channel. Uh, it's 
it's, it's an awesome thing. I, I wouldn't think I would have grown this fast, but, uh, you know, I, I owe it all to you guys. I do this all for you guys. Um, I just love the, the community and just uh, knowing that I'm, I help somebody, you know what I mean? And <clears throat> someone helped me and this is where I am at. So uh, I just love, just love that whole aspect of everything. So uh, thank you so much uh, for, for being there for me and for uh, being a part of our morning show. Yep. I, I definitely uh, want to thank everyone too that has subscribed and supported me too over this last year or so. Definitely means a lot and definitely keeps me motivated to keep getting better and to keep learning so that I can share different things with you guys. But without further ado, our topic is basically you know, buy, your buying strategies. Like, what are they? What are you doing differently than you did originally? And, uh, you know, how can you get better inventory? How can you get, like, you know, products for, you know, for a little, lot less money or a little bit less money and but not sacrifice the the huge potential or maybe even getting something uh, like sourcing better products? Um, I know when I first started, you know, it was straight to the, the Goodwill, buying anything that was like a buck or anything cheap, even some of the $5 stuff. But, uh, you know, as things, you know, went, went along, uh, definitely changed a lot of how I source and, and what I do. Uh, you know, I do multiple platforms. I do Amazon, eBay, and Macari a little bit. I'm going to do Macari more. Uh, I think this weekend I'm going to be doing a lot more cross-posting with Macari. Uh, I hear a lot of great things from Anthony, and I know Tommy 2.0 uh, talks about how you know, sometimes, or actually, I think for Tommy, he said it, it outsells uh, eBay more than, or it, 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 Macari outs, outsells uh, eBay. So if I can get any type of traction, even if it's close to what I'm doing now, it's going to be just a huge plus. So I want to get that going and running. But uh, yeah. what are some things that you, uh, Anthony, what, like from when day one, of, when you started sourcing, what things are, you done to, to get better uh, inventory uh, or maybe you know what things do you stay away from and what things are you looking for moving forward well like like you said um, early on I would just buy anything that was cheap um, thinking oh well you know if I get this for 50 cents or a dollar or something like that I can turn around and make some you know real money on it but one thing I've learned, and even like the big Ross buy I just made compared to the really big Ross buy I made last year, um, I noticed this year I put back a lot of items that were 49 cents, that were a dollar, that were, you know, $3 and under that I normally would buy just because I had a bunch of stuff left over from last year that just did not move in over a year's time. And I'm thinking, okay, well, even though it's only a dollar, even though it's only, you know, $3 or whatever it may be, um, by me putting out all of the um, all of the money that I've been putting out on stuff like that, over time, that, that amount of money adds up. And it just doesn't typically come back unless I take it to the flea market and sell it basically close to cost or basically just like blow it out discount status, which uh, a lot of times like just having so much stuff and, and wasting time listing items that are going to take over a year to sell or for example, that, that may not sell as opposed to finding items that are more sought after that will sell quickly. Um, that's just kind of a, a trans a transition that I'm trying to, move into with with my business is uh, early on like literally I would list anything just to list it because I was just trying to you know build my uh, eBay store and to you know get listings and just thinking oh well somebody out there probably wants this item but um, I've wasted so much time doing stuff like that you know what I mean and in this type of business time is money um, if you look at it this way like for example like I do this full time right now. So if I were to make this like an hourly job listing stuff like that, I would basically be working in a sweatshop because it's literally going to take up 
so much time and it's never going to move. Um, a lot of people are saying that they're having issues with uh, YouTube freezing. So hopefully, uh, hopefully you guys are seeing this okay. Um, but yeah, so that, that's one strategy that I do. Uh, one of my favorite strategies, though, when sourcing, uh, especially when garage sale season's here, because that's my favorite way to source is garage sales. Um, I, I love the bundling technique, you know what I mean, where you just make a great big pile of, you know, stuff, and then you say, yeah, what kind of deal can you give me for all of it? You know, and typically I, I'll, I'll build, if there's good stuff, I'll build a huge pile to where they're just overwhelmed with it. And they're just like, give me like such a smoking deal. It's insane. I've seen uh, Justin over at RBA flips do it with uh, an Ikea bag where he'll just take an Ikea bag and be like, Hey, do you mind if I throw some stuff in here and uh, we'll come together on a price and he'll just have like a massive big old bag full of stuff. And these people are like sorting through it. Like, eh, just give me such and such a price. And I, I've had success with that as well. Um, so uh, typically, Kent says kind of shady in my opinion. It's not It's not real shady if you give the people the opportunity to look through it. You know what I mean? You're not really doing anything but just buying a whole bunch of stuff cheap. You know, they, they give the price. So it's kind of on them to do their due diligence. You know what I mean? Like, for example, if you were to come to my house and I was doing a yard sale, and you were to say, hey, can I get a whole bunch of these things? I'd be like, absolutely, because I don't want to bring the stuff back in my house. Even as a reseller, if I'm putting some out for a yard sale, I want it gone. Because typically, if it doesn't sell at a yard sale or a flea market, then I'm just going to donate it, take the um, tax deduction, and move on. Because it's if, if, it's, if it's to that point, as a reseller, um, it, it's basically not only wasted space, but it's most likely a bad buy that you're just trying to get like whatever you can back for it. So really, I mean, it, it, it's on the person selling the item to be responsible with the item. You know what I mean? Like say you take a great big stack of, if you're looking through video games, right? You could take a great big stack of video games and put them all together. And Hey, how much do you want for, you know, for e you know, each of these items, if I buy them all or whatnot, and it, it's up to them to look and see if there's any Mario's in there, Zelda's, like any of the stuff that's super valuable, super rare. You know what I mean? They could just be like, ah, oh, just give me 50 cents a piece. You know what I mean? And if that's what they're asking, you know what I mean? Like, why would you outbid yourself to a complete stranger? You know? Yeah, that's uh, not about I, I, I agree. Lisa says, okay. it's shady if you bury the good stuff at the bottom when they are super busy. Yeah, see, I'm not really a barrier, but I, I will put together a big old pile of stuff, and then if I have an IKEA bag, I'll I'll bring I'll bring them a full bag, and I'll say, hey, look, I have this, 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 and this in there. But yeah, I mean, it it can be shady. Like I'll give you that. If if you do it the wrong way, it can definitely be shady. Right. But if you do it in an honest way, it's it's literally rather than carrying like a whole bunch of stuff like this, you're just bringing a bag. Like here, this is what I have. Let's go through it type thing. So, uh, Mac man wants to know if we're going to take a risk in buying a storage unit. Yeah. Uh, we're definitely looking into it. You know, Anthony's always on the prive kind of gave him the, uh, the, uh, what's it called? I like night him duty of, uh, finding this one. Cause he, he has it all, you know, he has all this, the sites and, uh, you know, he, I just kind of gave him that because I'm I, I'm really short on time with a lot of things. So he's been uh, duly uh, uh, noted for doing that. Uh, but yeah, I would definitely want to get one. Uh, I'm, I really want to take a chance and 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 check one out for sure. Hey, good morning, Kelly. Hip flipping mama. If you guys mama. are interested later on, uh, Kelly and I will be on my second channel, Flipping Hope. Uh, we're doing Bible study at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If anybody wants to come on in. Hey, Nana Tink, good morning to you. She says she's excited about the meetup. Yeah, I am too. Looking forward to meet you guys. Mac Man, saying, uh, Mac Man says, I think a lot of people are going for the higher profit items and hiding selling points, but it gets a little gets them a little depressed when they don't sell have sales for three or four days. That's like with my eBay store, I have like a nice, I guess like a mixture. Like I really don't have stuff. that's like super high dollar, 
unless it's like a brand new pair of shoes like I have right now, like the Air Maxes, or I'm trying to think what else would be like super high. I have like an Atari system with a bunch of bunch of games, and it has like a little like um, thing for the games, like a like a like a really nice, super nice case that you can put on your thing that has like a big bundle on. But other than that, like everything's kind of in the 20, 30. Yeah, basically, basically like fifteen, twenty, thirty dollar range. So I, I don't like my eBay the way I have it set up. I, if I don't have a sale in a day, it doesn't worry me. But if I like go without a week, you know, then I'm starting to worry. I'm like, wait a minute, what's going on here? But luckily, I don't have that big of a gap. Like I have one thing going out today, and uh, I was watching an earlier live with uh, RBA Flips. He was having issues with sales as well like being slow but it's kind of the name of the game right now with it right being right before tax season yep d says trying to be more uh i don't know the word when when picking i shop at pallet bins usually everything is a dollar 50 cents so it's easy to end up with loads of stuff quotations of junk that's why, I, like, I try not to go to like the bins as much. But that's discerning, by the way. The a discerning, okay. Yeah. I'm bad with pronunciation. Um, that's why I try to stay away from the bins a little bit. I mean, I like going there, especially when it's like where we're in, where we're at now, where it's like there's no sourcing. Facebook Marketplace is flooded with high price stuff for us, and you know, I can always do Amazon, but yeah, you know, I like to do, I like to try and level up both if I can. So it makes it a little harder, but I know what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah, bins are awesome, though, for low-dollar investments, for sure. It's, like, one of my favorite places to go, especially uh, this time of year. Yeah, yeah I've, I've definitely pulled some good stuff out of there. Um, I just try to be really picky on the stuff I'm grabbing out of there. I mean, I have the room, especially now since I'm down here. After I, I'm not even situated yet, but once I do, you know, even more. Uh, but I don't want to get to the point where, you know, like for like for example, like Anthony, like with you, like you're very low on space, so like sourcing can be very hard. Like you can have a huge deal come in, and you're like, what am I gonna do? Yeah. You know what I mean, you'd have it in your living room or something because you don't have the space. So. I don't want to get to that point, but I, I want to source things that, you know, like you were saying, that the time it takes to, to deal with it, the packing, et cetera, I don't want to be doing it from making like, like breadcrumbs of money, like just a little dash of a little bit of profit. If it's something that sits, I, I don't care. I'll, I'll make a, a few, I'll make a dollar if I have to just to move it and get it out of there. Just like I did on a shirt I sold today. Yeah. For sure. Uh, Mark, good. The house is getting even more crowded now. Uh, we now have a second inventory location outside of the basement. Uh, it's our spare bedroom uh, because now that Ash is doing Poshmark, she's keeping like totes of her own stuff. And uh, oh, yesterday she had that job interview, and like I'm messaging her after the show, like, where are you at? Like, the place was literally five minutes down the road. And, um, I knew for a fact she was done because she had been messaging me and stuff. So turns out she was actually uh, at Ross Dress for Less trying to get more stuff for Poshmark. So, yeah, she's definitely... Um, you might have a new partner in crime here with the Posh. She, she's catching the bug, that's for sure. That's cool, man. I'm, I'm happy for you because that just makes things like just so much better when, you know, sometimes when you have to put a hot dollar amount into, a, a you know, in some inventory or whatever and put it, you know, it's going to be awesome. It makes it that much easier to, to talk the wife into not trying to cut your head off when you go home. <laughs> I never once, like my wife trusts me 100%, but every once in a while she'll look at me like, like seriously, we're buying 200 of this. I'm like, it's going to go all up today. Don't worry. And then she'll see it selling because I'll show her, you know, sell 20 yeah. a day or 50, 20, you know, whatever a day. And, I'll just look at her like, what? I told you. I believed you. So, <laughs> that's what we do whenever we uh, source. We always, like if she finds something, she'll say, see, I told you I'd sell. <laughs> yeah. 
My pets has hit up the big flea markets. They have vintage stuff. The odds are better there than the thrift stores and finding more unique items. I, th I think for most people anyway. I Our th thrift markets, I don't know. Like the one we have local to us, it's, it's tough. Like they don't have much of the vintage stuff either. It's more like, you know, they'll have like the, the purses from China and, um, they'll have like some like car parts, which I don't know much about. Like I'm an electronics type of guy. So that it just, I don't know anything about that type of stuff. Mm -hmm. They'll have, uh, DVDs and stuff like that galore. They'll have like, uh, like baked goods, like people come sell there. So maybe I just need to find a better flea market because my local one isn't, uh, isn't one, but yeah, if you have those around you where it's a lot better, hundred percent, you can, it's basically like, almost like shopping at a garage sale for the most part, but they're probably going to be a little more strict on their prices. You know, there there's not going to be as much give if you're buying bulk or anything like that, but definitely find some good stuff for sure. Hot Mess Surf says, is Macari better to sell clothing on? I've been using Poshmark. Poshmark's uh, considerably better for clothing than Macari. Uh, you can sell clothing on Macari. I do all the time. But, um, yeah, Poshmark is probably a better marketplace for clothing because that's kind of like their their bread and butter type thing. Um, so if you're already doing it on Poshmark, uh, there's no harm in cross-posting it to Macari. Um, but... Uh, that's probably one of the better marketplaces for clothing. Um, eBay is not bad either, but market or uh, Poshmark is like basically most people that go on there are looking to buy clothing. So at least in my opinion, I know that you can sell other stuff there now too, but um, most consumers are like, Oh, I'm going to go to Posh and find a cute outfit or whatever. You know what I mean? They're not, you know, if they're going to Macari, they're probably looking for something more hard good side. I would think. No, my G says I used to sell one-off items like most do, but move towards the higher price slash bulk items. Pete the Craigslist, Craigslist hunter said he strives for the 50 and up profit models, so I did that personally. I really like that model. Um, I, I feel that with that model, you know, especially the one-offs, not not the one-offs, but the the bulk buys or. Or where you know you're you're paying a little more, but you know it's going to sell a little faster. I know he does that. Um, that typically does a lot better because this, the the money you're paying for, you know, it's for stuff that is going to move faster because it's still in demand, and the people that are selling it know there's value there, so they're able to come down a little bit, and then they make a deal. So that's so much easier to list, like especially eBay, like picture instead of listing a bunch of one-offs, like say 10, 15 one-offs, you're listing one listing, uh, multi-quantity or, you know, uh, uh, mul like multiple options of like the similar item, uh, so much easier than just doing the one-offs and making a little less money. But that's what I want to do if I can. And it's all about cash flow which we talked about on a previous show. So important to, to change and do different things like this, but that, that stuff usually sells a lot better. So that's usually, you know, once you get settled in, you know, the cash flow is pretty, pretty solid moving forward. Yeah, no problem, Johnny. Johnny said he'd be missing the show today as a doctor's appointment. No big deal, man. Life happens. Life, um, life, life first. Take care of yourself or you can't, can't work and do what you love. Yep. Steven has a uh, question. Uh, said Anthony and Nate the in the chat, have y'all tried to do loss leaders method like big retail stores do? If so, did it work for you? Um, I'm not sure what the loss leaders method is. Do you know what that is, Nate? No, I was hoping you did because I've seen that uh, as I was scrolling up because my chat jumped. I don't know if that's more or less like you know, you sell what's hot, and then when you get something that sits, you kind of just like liquidate it out, even at a loss, maybe. Yeah. You get your kind of like your profit back. I mean, that's 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 the only method I could think that the big retailers do. Like, for example, like you know, me and Anthony were looking at some wholesale stuff, and I know that these retailers are going to have a better price than us. But you know, for for some of the items that we're looking at, and then you go look at say Walmart clearance for similar ones that maybe just they got a newer version of or whatever they have to be losing a good chunk of money on every item walking out that door 
and then they're not making anything. So they're, you know, their, their, uh, labor and overhead is just going to be, you know, through the, through the ceiling. Hey, Shani. Good, uh, good morning to you. She says, happy taco Tuesday. Taco sounds pretty good right about now. My chat keeps jumping where I like lose my spot where I'm at. Yeah. Mine's doing the same thing. I'm going to have to go back to the pop-out chat again, but then I can't highlight. Paul says, my uh, flea market is filled with people selling pallet buys. We have four pallet sellers in our area, so 10 sellers could have the same blender and each be a dollar or two difference in price. I wish we had some, some pallet uh, sellers in our area. We don't. That might be something we need to do. Dude, there's a pallet uh, couple that uh, literally lives like right across the bridge from me. They have a uh, yard sale pretty much all weekend, every weekend, like during the summertime. But they they want like eBay pricing on stuff, so it's like it's not even really worth sourcing there. That was just like that one yard sale we hit. Um, we went together towards Pist Pittsburgh for that uh, cluster sale. I think it was White Oak or whatever. And I got them shoes. Mm -hmm. Like yep. they were kind of higher in price, but like the more you grab, the the better deal that they would give. And I made a killing on those two pair of shoes, so yeah. I would love to go back there again and again because they said that they do storage lockers and stuff. So I mean, if, if we're able to pull a couple gems out of uh, out of something maybe they don't know as much about, I mean, I'm all for for doing that. Yeah, that I would love to just kind of get in with some people that do lockers and, and set up some type of bulk uh, deal where there's still a nice chunk of meat on the bone, but you know, now they're moving a whole bunch of product that they don't have the room for or have to deal with. Okay, so Moronic Pest said uh, what the definition of the loss leaders thing is. Um, he says, loss leaders meaning selling items at a loss or a cost in hopes of getting buyers to look at your stuff, like the price of milk, etc. Um the only time I'll sell stuff at cost or for a loss is if I've had it for a really long time and I'm getting to the point where I'm going to donate it if I can't make anything off of it. So I, I don't really do that a whole lot, you know, just to get eyes on my stuff. Yeah, with, um, I don't know, everyone could be different, but I mean, my thought about it is, like, I don't, I don't have anybody that I know of that ever bought basically more than one item except for one person bought it like I basically made a game lot. But other than that, it's been basically a lot of one onesie items just going out the door. Um, so if it was, if eBay was set up a little bit different, you know, where like, say you're going to the buyer's page and, and searching for the item versus just going to a mass group of listings of the same or similar items, then maybe that would work a little bit better. But, um, you know, for, for the most part, like for example, the guy that bought this shirt, that I sold. I sold a, a polo shirt that for 10 bucks, free shipping, and it's going to California. <laughs> so I I only got it for a dollar. So I'm making something off it. Not a lot, but I'm making something. And I had it for 16 months. So I just wanted to get it gone. But like he was he was actually looking at multiple polos that I had and I told him I was like well, you if you want if you want a couple of them I'll I'll uh, throw them in a, a poly mailer, you know, in a flat rate, um, padded flat rate and ship them to you. And it'd be a lot cheaper you know, because he was going to pay. I didn't know the one shirt was free shipping. So he ended up, um, he, he, I accepted two offers and he said for the one to cancel and that the other one he, he wanted. So that didn't work. So, I mean, with eBay, I really don't think that works. Amazon definitely don't work. Um, I can't really speak about any other platforms because I haven't sold on Macari or had a sale on Macari yet or, or Etsy or anything like that. But maybe Etsy, that would maybe work. Yeah, Eric Keshoff just said, I don't see Lost Leader working on eBay, Amazon, etc., but maybe a website. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I just personally, like, I wouldn't want to tie money up in this that kind of a strategy because I just feel like that's I don't know it just feels like that's a losing strategy to me I mean granted I, I'm sure some people that works for you know what I mean like and nothing against anyone who does that it's just not not a direction I want to take 
my my money into. You know what I mean? Um, hey, what's up, Cindy? Good to see you. She thought this was a video upload. <laughs> no way, I, we're live every every uh, morning through the week. Uh, only time you might not see us is uh, during this time would be the weekend. Yep. We're glad you're here. We appreciate you stopping in. Yeah. Yeah, like uh, like if you're doing like a Shopify store or I'm trying to think what else it would be, or maybe like a Facebook Marketplace, maybe, maybe that would work. But uh, like you said, I don't like the thought of just taking a loss anytime because mm -hmm. that means I'm taking two steps back with what my cash flow was or what, you know, anytime you take any item, I don't care if it's, you know, I'm at the thrift store, maybe I grabbed 20 items and, you know, I made all my money and profit already. And now this is just kind of just like a, a, a free item. I still want to make something on it where it's, you know, respectable. Yeah, yeah. Not, I'll just hold it. You know what I mean? Unless it's something that goes bad. I mean, I have no reason to to really, like, you know, go into, you know, if I spend $10 on an item and now I'm selling it for 7 or 5 plus shipping to get out the door, then I'd rather just hold it uh, or even donate it because then it's a, that's a tax write-off as well, which, um, you know, every little bit helps to, to save having to pay the tax man, as yeah. we all, I'm sure, are going to be here shortly if you either done your taxes already or going to um i i would say this as far as that strategy goes you and i have kind of talked privately about one way we would incorporate something like that in our business but essentially what me and nate talked about uh, you know privately offline the only way we would consider doing something like that is for example for amazon if we were to buy something you know for uh, wholesale to get ungated on Amazon that right. we, knew we can make a lot of money in that category or with that type of product. Uh, it might be worth just buying, you know, 10 units of something to resell it pretty much close to cost um, just to kind of get in there and get ungated and be able to kind of just open the floodgates. But other than that, like there's really no scenario that I, I could con conceive seeing myself do that at this point not saying that i won't you know because if i you know would ever get to a point like for example like gas stations like i don't know how much money they're making on gas maybe pennies but they're trying to use the gas as a way to get people to come into their convenience store to make money so um i know it's probably the same with like cigarettes and like those type of state regulated items um, so like uh, it does work in certain instances, but I don't really perceive myself being in that kind of situation. You know what I mean? Anytime soon. What's going up? What's going on, Brian? Good to see you, man. Hey, Brian. How you doing? Brian's from, uh, from real close by my area. Nice. He said he's he's uh, we're talking on Facebook. He's uh, real excited about the meetup and stuff. So nice. We're gonna see him coming soon. Looking forward to meet you soon, man. But yeah, like the only the only way that I could see, you know, really doing like a clear out thing, like even like resale rabbit, where I'm like, you know, just basically like a buck an item or doing it real cheap would be if I got in the storage lockers and I'm just trying to clear up space where my cost is really cheap, like really, really cheap per item, and I'm just clearing space or, you know, I'm just going to donate. You know what I mean? Like, that's the only way that I could see that being a, a good idea. I mean, I, I, I'm, I can't even believe that these retail stores are doing like that where they're losing a bunch of money because that, that could easily be the reason why a lot of these shops are now, you know, closing their doors because they can't make any money. You know what I mean? Like that, that has basically, you know, killed their business off of, of, instead of having making say $600. Now they're, they only made 200 because they actually lost 400 on product that they lost money on or whatever. Yeah. I mean, I, I definitely see other business models doing that. I I've seen in my dad's company, for example, I've seen companies come in and offer prices for a certain product that, maybe like my dad had a really good price in but they couldn't beat him but they they just lost money on on him purpose because then that would make them 
see what else they can buy because they had minimal orders or or they would think that they would kill my dad's business off by just taking business away and then that's profit coming off of him as well so um yeah but that's that's all i think i could think of yeah, there's a lot of people in the chat that say they just look at one item they don't look really at the stores or anything yeah i did the same thing i just want well, what I have, I mean, every once in a while, if it's something like, for example, I think it's, I think it's the boxery. I can't remember what it was. It was one of those like basically like shipping supplies stores. Yeah. And I went to buy something. It was like buy two or more, get fifteen percent. Like if they're running something like that, maybe I'll take a look. But I mean, that would be the only reason why I would look at anything. But then you'd have to be very careful on how you run your sales and things like that as well, because if you're giving someone a 15 more percent on top of whatever sell you got going on, then man, that could really eat up all the profit. You could sure. potentially be setting yourself up for a loss. Good morning, Georgina. Hey, Georgina. Yeah, I know with like garage sales, like garage sales is going to be a real big thing for me this year. I want to really. I mean, I'm still going to be very picky on what I buy, but I'm going to look for some of the bigger items. I'm definitely going to go for a lot of bread, bread and butter stuff. Because, I mean, you know, as the season was falling off and now we're in the winter stages, I see a lot of my bread and butter stuff just, you know, dissipate. It's gone. Like, and that was a lot of the stuff I was getting some good sales in. And I'm seeing that in my bottom line with my eBay store per month because, you know, that stuff was either, you know, quick flips or just, you know, stuff that I knew was going to sell. I just need to see that specific buyer, just like those, uh, those Mountain Dew Adidas shoes I had. Like, I knew someone was going to buy them because Mountain Dew is a, a very popular company. If they were big enough for my wife or me, I'd probably maybe even keep them for myself because we drink Mountain Dew like crazy. So, hey, but, uh, you know, it, it's just, it's funny just, you know, just looking back and thinking what stuff that I grab, you know, for, for inventory this year and what I changed, what I did differently. Like with clothes, I got more picky. So basically, it's either I have to get real picky or I'm have to learn another type of niche or, or a product category that I'm not even looking at. Like, I really want to try to do like the women's clothing stuff, but I mean, that would be an overhaul of like total total learning curve because sizes and measurements are all different i mean the styles are just so many so if i can get my wife on board to really thrift at the goodwill and stuff i would love for her to to give me a hand in that because that would that would save me a lot of the learning curve yeah yeah you can imagine yeah like, like last year with the garage sales i with work and everything, like I would wake up Saturday, be, I'd wake up late, and I'm like, yeah, I didn't go. I'm not doing that this year because there's a lot of potential that was missing, and some of the stuff I bring back could be so good. I'm like, man, I was like, just money in the bank, and uh, yeah, that with the garage. I mean, with the wholesale stuff, I want to add in. I hopefully find something wholesale, which I think I did find a company recently that is going to be really good because they give me deals on stuff that they're trying to get rid of. So instead of like some companies, they do basically like a pre-order setup where, okay, if you want this, then we'll, we'll let you know when it comes in and we'll charge your credit card. And then once it's gone, it's gone. And it's on back order well, with this company. They actually have inventory in house. So I'm able to get some stuff at clearance prices. The question is, is it going to still be good to sell, especially if I do it for Amazon? So, It's definitely something you want to keep an, keep an eye on. Yeah, I'll be doing a lot of, uh, I mean, the, the amount of items this, this site had, too, it was crazy. I mean, it was, you know, the size of the one we're looking at first. I mean, this one's probably like three times as big and because there's so many items that they carry. Yeah. So it's just going to be a lot more, like, just searching and looking and, and looking at the, uh, you know, keep, uh, like it's going to be countless hours. I haven't even started looking at it because 
I need a thousand dollar minimum order on it too. So I haven't even had the money to, to really go chase it yet, but I might have it this weekend. So we'll see. There you go. Yeah, Lisa C says she thinks the loss leader applies more to brick and mortar stores than e-commerce in her opinion. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you. Um, I know I saw, uh, in the chat before you uh, wrote that even as a buyer yourself, you hardly ever look through somebody's store. And I found that I don't do that very much either. Uh, unless like, for example, I've found like a couple of video games or something like that, that I might be interested in buying. Um, I will, if somebody has better price, I might look through some of their other items that they have to see if I can, um, you know, bundle a few things and get a even cheaper deal. But other than that, like, yeah, I, I hardly look to see whose store I'm buying from or anything like that. Just buy it because of the protection guarantee from eBay. You look at a lot of things that, um, like, like for example, like there's companies that have like the $35 and above, like Walmart for the free shipping. You have uh, like eBay, like say a person charges shipping on every item they sell. And if you bundle or grab a couple of different items, then, then you're saving yourself the shipping cost. Which, yep. I mean, I wish there was a way like, like I could put in my description, but I don't think a lot of people read that. But I wish there was a way that you can kind of do that, like let it be known that hey, you know, if you bundle something or buy more, you know, I'll I'll give you a better shipping price because I don't think a lot of people understand. Or you gonna know that or whatever. Yeah, for sure. I know that you're able to also. I'm sure most of you guys know this, but you're able to offer discounts to to buyers just to entice them to look through your items. Where, for example, like you might get five percent off if you buy two items as opposed to one, or a certain percentage to buy three items or more. Um, so there's a, there is a way to entice people to look through your items. And to look for multiple items so that they can get a cheaper discount on, on everything. This is said. I, I didn't lie. I look at the eBay shipping supply store when I use my coupon. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> yeah, all right, that's that's probably all, most of us. I mean, that's you know, in, in that case, you know, you need to spend that coupon. You gotta you know spend all the money for it. So gotta 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 get your your worth because if you use, once you use that, it's gone. So. Tommy Bargain Effect says that you can promote shipping discounts in your promotions. Oh, shipping discounts? Yep. Okay. I know that you could do the, you know, price off per item, but I didn't know you can do that. Is that in your business policies or is that just it like a under promotions? Okay. I'll have to check it out. Appreciate the info. Yep, I, I have mine set up to where it just automatically, like, if you buy several items from me, it'll just automatically bundle them like that. Yeah, because, I, I mean, that would be one of the only ways, you know, because a lot of times when I'm doing, thinking of things to try or what's going to increase business, you know, um, I'm trying to put myself in the, to the buyer's shoes. Like, what would entice me to buy something? What would, you know, get me locked in and say i need this item or i want to buy this guy right now so i mean if i'm able to put that where it like tommy says it, it will show up at the top of your store then uh, you know that might that might give me a little advantage because i'm always looking for a little advantage that's why i start doing the the international shipping i even have on all my new listings now i have fedex smart post as an option so that the shipping can be a little bit cheaper if possible yeah. I know if it hits a certain range, it gets more expensive, but, uh, you know, I'm looking for any little advantage. Like I shipped something to a guy in Pennsylvania right here in the, in the state. I went across to buy Philly and, uh, it was over a pound. I think it was only like $6 and 70 cents to ship smart posts. So, I mean, they chose it, they paid it. So, uh, you know, it, it will help. Uh, maybe that help make me a sales that him paying an extra two or three bucks. You know, he saved in shipping, which maybe I'm cheaper now. So, Cindy says that she's noticing a trend of eco-friendly shipping supplies. Yeah, 
like all the eBay supplies, I believe, were all eco friendly. Mm-hmm. And then they even had stickers like saying something about eco friendly something like this is the eco friendly box or something. They had it the, the eBay store. I think I missed somebody coming in the chat. Oh, yeah. there he is, Alex. Alex, aka the best uh, national anthem singer in the world. Yep, absolutely. AKA the stunt double for DJ Khaled. <laughs> up, Glad to see you. Yeah, like uh, Steven says, I have volume pricing on some of my listings. That's I do that. I do like I usually do a, a sell on all my items, or on there's some items that I don't want to have a sell on. So you got to be careful with the volume pricing because. I, I don't know if I did that in the past or not. I think I had it like, if you buy three items, you get 15% off. Mm. And so I bought like one main item and then bought two cheapies. And then I'm basically getting the two cheapies for free because uh, all the discounts or whatever. So yeah, you, you just got to gotta look for some advantages, guys. With FedEx being a little bit cheaper, add that in there as a, as additional uh, shipping uh option i mean it's what they they chose and they, they, just a little advantage that uh you know that that we can use that maybe not everyone else wants to do like some people be like oh i'm not i'm not going to fedex it's too far forward drive there's a lot of uh drop-off points that for fedex and staples i mean not staples um and ups and, and different things like that so just uh you know before you add it just double check online to see where you can drop packages off like i know that uh in bell vernon which is uh i think like five minutes from my house which is kind of my way to work um you know it's dollar general has one which i never even thought i could drop off packages there yeah they didn't know how to scan my package in which was a new one new girl in there because uh amber dropped it off last night mm-hmm. and, uh she was like, this is the USPS package. I'm like, no, it's smart post. So it's going to say USPS, but it's, it's FedEx smart post. So I was like, tell her to scan the barcode. Yeah. yeah. You scan the, the smaller one, I think, or whatever, the vice versa. And it's not working. I'm like, scan the other one. It, then it, I was on the phone. I told you so. <laughs> it's crazy to think like there's these people that actually have these jobs where they're supposed to like know what to do with packages and they just have no clue. Like I, I have to watch the people at uh, staples like Hawks because I've had two people on two separate occasions um, go with a Sharpie and try to scratch out the FBA label that's going to Amazon because it's not the one that they scan. And I, I have to like literally be like, don't touch that label. That's for Amazon has nothing to do with you. Please keep it. Don't write on it, scratch it out, or any of that other stuff. Like, just scan your little box, and we're good to go. <laughs> so, like, yeah, I've literally had that happen on two separate occasions. So now I go in there and I just start telling them up front, like, look, this is a separate label. This is just for Amazon. Disregard. Scan that one. <laughs> I don't know if any of you guys have ever had that type of situation happen when you go to like a third party. Um, place like that for uh, dropping off, you know, either FedEx or UPS or any of that stuff. But um, uh, Paul says, just don't drop off at Walgreens. Yeah. Yeah. I've never had an issue with Walgreens personally. Although the one package I sent to Canada, I took to Walgreens that ended up being a huge pain in my butt because it, it's, I still have it at the house. (laughs) <laughs> and my wife's yelling at me because it's been sitting up in my living room for like a month now <laughs> that I, I need to get that back out. But I just, I don't know. I'm a little cautious about having to repay shipping and it gets sent back to me again. Right. Like with, uh, like what Cindy said here, like schedule pickup uh, with FedEx, it's free. So if you're doing smart post schedule pickup, it's free. Um, or you could drop off. Uh, the only one that you would have to pay would be uh, UPS, unless they have a drop-off thing as well. I know my my one is basically like a block over from my FedEx one, so it's not that big of a deal. But also, 
make sure you know when they pick up too because like i know my dollar tree picks up at eight in the morning so there's no way i could get something out the same day but as long as it's scanned in and it's dropped off air then you're okay with uh ebay or whatever so but it's just you know it's just so you know so you know if you might have a couple of packages going out and you're like oh man i missed uh i missed going to the post office you can always just go do that one and then it goes out basically the same way early in the morning because it goes straight to um you know, when they pick it up at 8 in the morning, it's go straight back to FedEx like it did with mine. Yeah, and like, like Ken says, it, if possible, get a receipt, too. I mean, that's just good to have. So if a package gets lost or, oh, you never dropped it off here because someone's got to be responsible for it now. With some yeah. of them, you get insurance with, like with US, USPS, you get insurance. Not 100% sure about uh, UPS or FedEx. I think FedEx, you know, I don't think there is. I don't think. But if you have that receipt, it gets lost. Or they said, oh, I never, you know, or tracking never moved. And the place that you dropped it off at is, is responsible for that package. And they'll have to reimburse you for that. Yeah, I'm, ex I'm excited for garage sale season. It's starting to, starting to get close. Hopefully... In March, we start getting some better weather. Yeah, I definitely agree. Yeah, I mean, I can't stress enough. Sometimes you gotta, you gotta, you gotta change with the changes. And uh, people that don't have that FedEx Smart Post uh, choice, where you know it would make a difference on. Um, you know, that's just, just as good as doing simple export, like with international. You get you got an advantage, where someone else, you know, they they would get the sale. So, yeah, yeah, I definitely agree. So, what are some strategies that you guys in the chat have used as far as buying items? Like, is is there any specific? you know, tricks you try to use, like not, I shouldn't say tricks, but like tricks of the trade. Uh, what I mean by that, um, as far as trying to get a better deal or uh, maybe a negotiation strategy or anything like that, I'd be curious to, to learn the kind of different things that people were doing uh, just because, you know, I, I would like to apply more stuff to the way I deal with people you know, to try to get better deals for myself personally. Well, the one thing that me and you uh, both know from experience um, with, um, you know, like when you go to the stores, dealing with the managers, mm -hmm. um, we, we've gotten end caps of stuff, you know, yeah. it was already on sale. Like, I think the item was like a $20 item, $15 item. It was on sale for on clearance for $5. We ended up getting them for a dollar. And we took them all, yep. and then the other item was like I think fifteen or ten, and then it was our it was down to two dollars or something, and we got them for fifty cents. So it's just just uh, a lot of it is just being, you know, just just asking. Just you're going to get shot down. You know, there's going to be managers and and people that you talk with, or people at garage sales that you know just you know they're not they're not they're not down the wheel and deal and just uh just make sure to to give out a shot have some relationships and let them know hey like you know i shop here a lot um i'm all about buying in, in bulk and quantity especially stuff that you want to get out of here um so if something goes on a deep sell hey let me know here's my number here's my card and uh you know i'll, I'll be here in a snap of fingers or you could just put it aside and, uh, you know, it's a guaranteed buy. Kelly says, follow up with your local uh, thrift store on Facebook or sign up for their newsletter to the sales ahead of time. They did a, it was like a, a email sign up thing at my local one, which I, I guess. Is that a good one or is that a different one? Uh, this was for, um, this was from Goodwill. Uh, no, I did the one in Pittsburgh before, so I was already signed up, but. Um, I guess they're all doing that now for uh, for the Goodwills to try and get people on their email list for whatever reason now. Yeah. 
Yeah, Moronic Fest. I was just there uh, in September, early September. I went. Um, I actually have a video on my channel that you guys can check out if you want. Uh, when I went to Brimfield Flea Market, it was awesome. I found a vintage Power Ranger blaster set um, that I paid 15 bucks for, and I ended up flipping it for like 90 and It was like one of the first things I sold when I got back. But yeah, there's, there's definitely some uh, pretty good stuff to find out there. Good morning, CJ. Thanks for coming in. We appreciate it. Oh, by the way, Road Warrior Reseller just started releasing content, too. Um, I just watched his first two videos last night. So nice. show him some love, guys. Even says on an online auction, wait till the last couple minutes of the bid. Yeah, they usually have like what they call a soft ending where they'll, uh, you know, restart the bid. Or not, not restart the bid, but give you like five minutes and no one bids, then you win. But uh, sounds good, Paul. Yeah, unless it's unless it's something that no one has interest in, to put your put your bid in the last second or put a watch timer on it, and you know you'll get the uh, you'll get the shot. Keelan Kizzle says, "If I'm not embarrassed, I may ask if they will take X mile for an item, and then I am doing it wrong. All I can say is no." And, and I'm not on anything exactly. That's exactly how it was for us at Walmart that one day. Uh, I had my wife do it the second time when we got it done. It was the same exact product. So I had a feeling that they had it moved out of the normal area. So I'm like, this is something they, they want out of here. They want the shelf space. And there was a lot of them. There was a lot more at the second one. So yeah. I told my wife, I says, go ask. Uh, hey, Jonathan. I think, I think out of total, we had four four different Walmarts we hit up and out of those four, two of them did it. So I'll take 50%. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Nope. Success rate on that. The worst I can say is no. Like, uh, for example, I, I have videos when I was down in Rhode Island going into uh, Savers and the employees there are giving me discounts. You know what I mean? And that's, that's like going into Goodwill and asking for a discount. You know what I mean? It's not common, but that doesn't mean it can't happen. You know? So, I've just come accustomed to, you know, like I'll just, uh, you could call it schmooze. You know what I mean? I'll just schmooze up to employees or managers and, you know, I'll just start talking with them. And then, you know, I'll hit them with, well, was this the best you can do? You know, like, is there any wiggle room on this price? Because typically everybody has wiggle room unless they're just like a below totem pole type of employee. But if they're a manager, you know what I mean? Of a store, then they, they can always do like at least 10% off or something like that for the most part. And right. I know that just from working in a retail environment. But as far as like if you're at a flea market or you're, you know, at, at a garage sale or something like that, uh, Moronic Pest said most vendors expect for you to ask for a discount. I, I know for me, I do. Sometimes I'll mark my items a little bit higher than um, what I want. And from there, you know, I'll, you know, be able to come down and kind of get right around where I'm comfortable. Yes, EJ says schmooze for show. Yep. Got to. You got to, you know, it's all about getting these connections because chances are if you get that connection once and you can mentally put that in there like okay i can will and deal with at least this manager which hopefully they stay there forever yep. or at least you know that store maybe there's a good chance that another one will do it but you know i always try to get the number of the manager and just be like or tell my number like i was saying before or if you have a business card this way you could be like a big shot and be like here's my phone and then, you know, you're in there like swimwear. I mean, there's plenty of products that they get in. They don't care. Well, a lot of them don't care. You know, they just want to get that shelf space. And then they're back in the business getting something else that they're making some high profits on or better profits on. Thank you. you know. It's awesome of you, Ted. Thank you. My wife just made me a jalapeno omelet. What is it? Oh, okay. Okay. 
My wife, my wife went to the store, so I'm hoping she made me back a little song song. What's up, Snobby? Good to see you, man. What up, Snobby? Junk girl, what's up? Yeah, one thing I've kind of um, even tried to do as well is um, once I realize that there's certain stores that will work with me if they're cool with me, like, for example, I'll go into dollar stores and as I'm going around scanning, if I've like worked up a conversation with an employee, whether they're stocking, scanning, doing whatever, um, I'll, I'll even say, hey, what are some items that you see people come through and like buy in large quantities here? You know what I mean? And then they'll be like, oh, well, this person comes in and gets this. This person comes in and gets that. And it'll at least it's like asking for a bolo and they don't know you're asking for a bolo. You know, so then I'll I'll get the item that they're going by and grabbing in bulk, and then I'll go and scan it on my Amazon app to see, you know, is this worth me picking up? What's up, Gary? Good morning, buddy. Morning, Gary. Yeah, like uh, like for my first fourth quarter for eBay, like reselling all together as well. Um, I had an inside person with Walmart. And they worked the toy section. So, um, had a conversation with her where I was pretty open what I did. And she thought it was really interesting. She had a friend that used to do what I did. So, boom, we had like a kind of a connection. Cause she was kind of cool with it. And, you know, and obviously I like Intel. So, that's basically what, what I needed. I wanted that Intel for what was going to sell fourth quarter. So, you know, I have my kids, which they give me a pretty good idea for a certain range of, of toys or, or, or collectibles and stuff. But, you know, I wanted to get a little bit of that older range as well because those sell, you know, usually even better. So I was like, so what, you know, what, what sells? Like, what, what are people getting that basically as soon as it hits the shelf, they're gone? So she named three or four products. Mm -hmm. And I made a killing on uh, on a few of them. I'm trying to think. I think the the year after I started, that was when I did my first Amazon. This last fourth quarter, um, I sent in a similar item that was like a different variation, and I did really well on that too. So you know, just following the trends and, and understanding certain things, and just being nice to people. Sometimes just being nice really pays off. Anyway, you know what I mean. Like it's always you always want to be nice with everyone, but you know what I mean. Like it's one of those cases where you can actually, uh, you know, like uh, get a little something back for, for just being a nice, nice individual. Yeah. yeah. Especially if we're just a normal worker or manager. I mean, they, they deal with a lot of people that are jerks anyway. So if you go up to them and just try to kill them with kindness as my, my, uh, my mom would say sometimes with me, she's like, sometimes you guys got to kill them with kindness. I'm like, what? And I actually understand what that means now because, you just act extra nice and you know they're they're more enticed to say okay yep yep cindy just dropped a pro tip in there too uh, in regards to dollar tree having the bulk buying site um for anybody that does do like amazon or anything like that and if you have trouble going in and finding the quantities of what you're looking for you can actually order it online and you can go pick it up for free at the store in bulk or you can have it ship it to you, but it's cheaper to go pick it up at the store. Yeah, there there was an item that I I bought. Um, that they anything that they have a variety of an item, like say it's a cup or a bowl or whatever. They if there's a variety of that item, chances are that's what's in that case quantity. So make sure that you know you understand that you're getting multiples of the similar item as well with your cases. Uh, or if it's just like, you know, another product that is only like basically the one, you know, you'll be getting straight of that one product. So just, it will say it on the website whenever you click on it or whatever. But, um, I know with my, uh, Dollar Trees, for some reason, none of my local ones I can do pick up in store. So I either have to ship it or I have to drive 45 minutes away or a half hour to just get free pickup. So. And the store keeps changing on me too, so it's like I don't know what's going on right now. Yeah, uh, we have a question there from Road Warrior Reseller. He said, "I heard Amazon requires invoices, receipts, 
and does not allow Dollar Tree products. Is that true? Um, they do allow Dollar Tree products. Um, I send them a lot of Dollar Tree stuff, actually. Um, but you want to make sure that you have your invoices and receipts because if somebody like tries saying that you're selling counterfeit items, um, the way that you prove that you're not is by providing a receipt for the items that you purchased. With Dollar Tree regular receipts, they're pretty vague mostly on their receipts. So just be very, um, just be very knowledgeable what it says on the receipt. Uh, but if you order online, if I remember correctly, they're they're really good on what the description is. So it's actually better that you actually buy it online. And that's that could be um, I'm trying to think about receipt anywhere around here. I think I haven't think I bought anything in a while. Um, but on the online ones, it's a little more bet. You know, it's a bit, it's more descriptive of what it is. It's actually what the item is. But that can also change too. So just be very uh, be very cautious, you know, what you're buying and, and what your receipts say. Like for example, if you're buying like, I know that some of the, like the like sometimes I have Disney items or some type of character on some stuff. Sometimes Amazon will just let that go, and you'll be able to sell it. But chances are, someone made a listing that wasn't all the information wasn't correct where it should have been gated. So, and if it's not, then just be very careful because that would be one of the first products they'll say this product is not uh, authentic because it's a, a say like a Mickey Mouse or whatever. So. You wanna you wanna be very careful with that, but if you do if you do it correctly, you can you can be protected and be okay. Mm -hmm. Um, Steven Scroggins asked if either one of us ever used our uh, ladies to get a better deal. Um, sure. I typically don't, just because I'm the more pleasant one of the two. <laughs> you know what I mean? Ash isn't gonna go beg somebody for a deal. Um, she'd rather just get in and get out. Um, so I, I normally don't, but I know Nate definitely has, you know, used a little eye candy to give himself a better deal. I told my, I told my wife, I said, go ask, I'll go take the kids over here. So this way it looks like you're a single mother. And then as soon as they say yes, just text me and I'll roll up with the beard with the crew. <laughs> <laughs> I did that once. I ain't gonna lie. It worked. <laughs> I guess it's, I guess it's good to bring the kids and the wife every once in a while, right? <laughs> no, I love I love going to the stores with my kids, even though sometimes they can make it hard. But uh, yeah, I try to I try to have the best balance of family and life with with them. So, and like I was, I don't know if you guys were watching Grimes' show. Like I said, like you know, I, I try to show them even at such an early age because I want them to instill that you know um, that what I'm doing, so they they kind of have interest all the way up. Cause you know how kids are. If you're doing it, they want to know what you're doing and how you're doing it, and they're paying attention even at a young age. So, you know, when they get older, they they already have a little grasp or have a very uh, very much interest. Like, I think my oldest is going to be a uh, reseller because uh, he told me the other day. He goes, "What did he say?" I'm trying to think. We said something. He said something like. Uh, he said something to the fact like uh, that I, I, I sell all this stuff and and uh, I can buy anything I want. So he said that he wants to do it like me because he then he can buy anything he wants. Yeah. <laughs> That's good, though, that he's saying that and wants to be like that. Um, CJ has a uh, question here. He says, hey, guys, I'm an Amazon and eBay selling seller who also works full time at post office. I'm thinking of starting YouTube to document my hustling. Any advice? And he says, thanks. Um, I I personally think that'd be a really cool um, concept is not only document what you're doing um, reselling wise, but also like being an insider from the postal system. You know what I mean? Like you can probably tell us things that the average reseller just doesn't know you know, in regards to shipping and all those different things, you know? So I think it'd be a good thing to kind of incorporate your journey, but also what you do as far as actual work without getting in trouble. 
yeah, like with, with the videos, and this is something I need to work, you know, better with too, because I don't do enough pre recorded I, I should be doing a lot more and just recording everything I do, but it's just time so, so tough sometimes, and, you know, having a family is hard, but if you're doing it full time, just sit record, show what you can do, and even if it's just something as, as shipping, shipping would be the, the most, like, probably the most important thing or one of the things that you can give us a really good insight, like Anthony said, because I'm sure you've seen some, some do's and don'ts just working in the post office. Like, and, and maybe you should pack your item uh, like this, or maybe some like packing hacks just that you kind of see, or, or like I said, the big don'ts, because a lot of us probably do things that probably shouldn't be done and, and get done. And then, it gets broke or whatever. And it's like, well, how did this package get broke? And it's like, well, you didn't put any bubble wrap on a glass piece. Well, I wonder why it broke <laughs> or like, you know, not packing it tight and maybe not throwing a little extra tissue paper in there or, you know, there's, there's a bunch of different things, but uh, yeah, just kind of giving your side of how the shipping world is would be amazing. I would definitely hundred percent watch that. You can probably share horror stories too, of things that you've seen. Oh yeah. Come across you know, at the post office of things people have done wrong, maybe things people have gotten in trouble for, you know, like obviously without sharing any like customer information or whatnot. Now you're going to uh, do do reselling like, uh, or you, said, you said you're doing Amazon eBay selling. Okay. I was going to say, if you're going to quit the post office, uh, I don't know how much you could really share on that, but like Anthony said, you can kind of hide your information. Yeah, he says he's in uh, northeast Philly uh, in a large distribution facility. That's cool. Yeah, that'd be that'd be really cool. Just yeah, to... I mean, definitely protect your job, you know, first and foremost. But, like, even if you're not at work, like, say you're at home in front of a computer just kind of talking about different, you know, things that you've seen, like, you know, practices that were poor versus practices that are good, that kind of thing. Philly Picker says, one of the hardest things to do for me is to go out source with the kids. The kids want to buy everything and keep it. Uh, I feel your pain. I feel your pain because I go through the same thing. And not only that, my wife is like, she, like when, I, when we first started doing this, like I was trying to teach her things so she would help me shop. So we'd save like split like half the time in the store. Yeah. Well, it's like when I start shopping and like we'll break up. And I'll take one or two of the kids. She takes one of the kids or two of the kids. And then I'm shopping for the business. And then I, she'll come back and it's like kids' clothes, food, some type of electronic or, you know, some for the kids. And I'm like, what What happened here? What are we, what are we doing? Yeah. <laughs> I thought we, were, uh, thought we were doing business today. So it, it is tough. I, I mean, personally, it is, you know, as bad as it sounds, I think I would source a lot better by myself at times, but also my wife really helps me a lot too with it. Like the, the women aspect of sourcing and having both that at the same time and being able to split up like that is, you know, when it, when it works, it works amazingly. So, uh, no, but I feel your pain with that for sure. Good morning, Maggie doodle. Uh, snobby has a question. He said on average, how much time do you spend a day working on the computer? Probably too much, um, whether it's working or, you know, using it for YouTube or whatever, I'd say too much. Um, when I'm listing, uh, typically the computer's job during that time, um, if I'm just listening to eBay, um, it's to either entertain me or to do a working hangout or whatever like that. Um, so most of the time I'm listing directly from my iPhone. But if I'm cross posting like on Vendu, I could sit there for, you know, like hours while I'm watching TV or something like that. I'd just go back through, list everything I listed to eBay that day, cross post it back and forth, um, you know, maybe edit videos or whatnot. Because I consider that part of like my daily work is making sure that there's always videos out every day on the channel. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it. It, it's it's different every day. It just depends on what is, um, you know, on the agenda for the day in my like regular life outside of 
my basement, if that makes sense. Good morning, Maggie. With with me, I don't. Uh, well, other than last night, because I fell asleep in my chair multiple times, but uh, so I was in my chair a lot last night because I slept in it. But uh, you know, normally, without me slip falling asleep in my chair, I'm probably in, in here. You know, after work, probably at least two hours, and then be, you know, in the morning when I wake up, probably at, well, at least two hours, but probably probably three hours. So probably on average day five hours you know all together and i think it's part of the reason why i don't do as much pre-recorders because if i did pre-records then i'd have to be using some of that sourcing time for editing and and maybe even possibly being sitting in even longer so Maggie says that my husband and I divide and conquer. He scans books. I go for clothing, but we don't have little ones to worry about. I wish I had a good babysitter. Anybody look close to me on babysit? I got, th <laughs> I got three monsters that scream, fight. Yeah. I mean, they're good kids, but they're just knuckleheads. They are good kids. I'll give them that. Even, even Nate Jr., he's like the cutest kid. He was like throwing food at me the other day and I still couldn't stay mad at him because he was just so dang cute. <laughs> he, he always wears whatever he's uh, he's eating too. He, like he, he ran up on Anthony and he was eating Oreos and Anthony was like, you need to wipe your face. I says, that's normal. He's just letting you know what he ate. <laughs> yep. Yeah, he wears it. It's almost like he, he'll grab like a cookie, squish it up and just find a face. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but that's that's kind of what we do. I only got to do that with my wife once, but it was nice. I wish we could do it every once in a while, at least, you know, once a month. You know, me and her just go out and just crush it. Yeah, it's so hard to get just getting the kids out of the car and stuff because they're so little. You know what I mean? They're so little and stuff, so it's it's a little harder getting them out of the car, and then it's a, it's just a longer process just getting in there, and we're trying to be in and out of of the stores as fast as possible so you can get the most possible profit you can. Yeah, for me, being on YouTube makes my day on the computer longer, snobby, because um, I'm, I'm normally trying to make sure I have stuff edited for days I'm not going to be live. So um, that takes a while, especially because my computers aren't running real good right now. Uh, it takes forever for stuff to um, render and actually... Um, edit, so it's it's been a real time suck for me lately. That's why I've been trying to do a lot more uh, lives and hangouts and stuff because I've been having trouble getting everything edited. Hey, Matt says, so when I'm sourcing, I, I used to look for anything that made profit. Now I look for items that sell for at least twenty dollars or more. I I try to to have it so my profits, you know, a little bit. A little bit higher or whatever. I mean, I definitely go for my 100% ROI is like my base, but it's very hard to to find items where you're making big chunks of profit. There's probably only like three items that I've ever sold that I was able to make either a close to $100 on or you know or, or chunks like that. One of them was uh, one of those calculators that Walmart had on clearance was like a uh, pink, like uh, um, I can't remember the model, but it's one of the most popular models that everyone shows at the uh, yard sales. It's like a TI eighty four something, but it was like a pink one, so it went for I think more money on Amazon than normal ones. I think it was like one twenty five. I paid uh, thirty, so I think I profit like eighty bucks after it's all said and done. So that was one of the good uh, big chunk sales, and it sold. The second it opened up, um, but yeah, it's, it's just it's hard to it's hard to find that chunk profit like that. Yeah, Nana Tank says, "Keep it going in the family. Once it's in your blood, it stays generation to generation." 
Absolutely. It's always good to, um, you know, teach your kids. I mean, I don't have kids yet, but when I do, I definitely want to teach them uh, what I've learned as far as being able to go out there and make money for myself. I know uh, whenever I have my nephews, you know, I'll, I'll let them come down in the basement and like a lot of you guys know the infamous uh, <laughs> falling uh, uh, shelf and all that, you know, inventory I lost, but it's worth it to me that they understand that there's ways that they can break out of the nine to five grind that they're so being indoctrinated with um, that you are able to still live an American dream. You're able to go out there and make something of yourself in your own right. And you don't need, not that education's bad. I, I fully endorse college and all those things. And, um, you know, the whole nine yards, you know, I endorse getting a good job and, you know, doing all that stuff, but that's not for everybody. You know what I mean? And some people like that is like hell on earth go into, you know, a cubicle every day. And, you know, you just want to like slam your face off the monitor sitting there the whole day. But those same people could turn around and start working for themselves and thrive and just feel like the shackles are off of them, you know, um, vocationally there's no no that wouldn't be the word but work wise so it's like we we all unless you work for yourself full time or you know in a business say that your family owns or whatever i mean there, there's going to be times you're you're going to be jobless or you know that you're looking for a job and i want my kids to have this no matter what in their back pocket it might not be the main thing they do but I would love to have them either have this as like a side hustle or a in-between job or whatever you want to call it, you know, instead of having to rely on the government or, you know, getting food stamps or whatever, you know, so this way they can still succeed or have a, you know, not have that horrible couple of weeks or whatever the case in between where they're just like, what am I going to do? Because mm -hmm. I went through that a few times. And especially before this last job I worked at and it was miserable having to deal with, uh, unemployment and, and, um, uh, you know, uh, getting food stamps and having to go through all those hula hoops and, you know, all that type of stuff. So Larry, has a question, Nate. Uh, he says, do you have a separate eBay business and bank account? and a separate Amazon business and bank account, or do you run them both under one business and bank account? Um, I run them both under one business and bank account. Um, so uh, when I first started, everything was kind of running through PayPal and I had a, well, I still do have a PayPal debit card that I can use to kind of spend money out of PayPal anytime I need to. But um, uh, once I incorporated the business, um, as an LLC, I went and opened a, you know, like official bank account. And that's what I use. I use my LLC for pretty much everything now. Yeah, same here. Everything funnels through the business now. Um, at first it was, um, you know, silver brighter. So everything was together. But that's why, you know, I was going to do it at the end of last year. But then I would have to pay the, the fees again or whatever. So I did it at the the first year so this way to be a lot easier for bookkeeping wise everything just have everything separate and it's just a lot less of a headache because i mean if, like for example like i had to go back through a couple credit card statements and pull out uh receipts and and other things off bank statements because it was it was for the business instead of personal so it just made a lot a lot more headaches than you know, if you have a, a checking account or a credit card, you, you could just print a statement. And there's all your uh, expenses, and, and it's pretty easy to document from that point on. Because, you know, if you're you're going to the store and you're spending two hundred dollars for the business, you know, and you're doing reselling, okay, well that was Amazon, uh, you know, inventory. So you, even if you want to keep it separate like that, you can. You know, if you're doing garage sales and you're pulling out cash at ATM, you know, that's pretty self-explanatory what where that money went to and stuff like that. So it's just really easy to 
kind of maintain and even just kind of you know separate and see well okay well this year i made this much profit with ebay this much with amazon it's, you could do a lot of things differently yeah but everything's one account for me so snobby said uh kids are often smarter i guess than their parents um they may not want to do what you have done and yeah that that's definitely something i would never force like my future kids to do anything that i've done or anything like that my thing is i want to show them the options that they have that are available to them and um you know i, I want to teach them what i know you know so that way they can you know kind of just have another tool in their tool belt but ultimately like when i have kids i want them to live their dream whatever that is and i don't want them to think that there's only one way to achieve it i want them to know all of the options and whatnot um yeah, I, I, I just want my kids to be like, you know, possibly self self efficient when necessary, mm -hmm. just as having their their back pocket. Like, hey, I can go resell or do it on the side just to you know make sure that they can have better. Like, maybe they do a job or or do a profession that doesn't make as much money as they would like or maybe need, or maybe they want to work part time and then do that full time part time. You know, that might be something they would maybe want to do. Uh, have a good day, Nana Tink. Uh, CJ was asking the LLC process. It, it's really simple. You can actually uh, apply for an LLC online. Um, yeah, I, I did it all online. Um, but yeah, I, I set up mine online I completely yeah. myself. Basically, so, you just you just go on the state website, make sure the name that you want is available, and then go to the IRS website and. You get the free EIN from them, and then you go back to the state. You you put your name in there since you know it's good, and then you pay. I think it was 125 bucks, and then you go with the state. I think there's one more form you have to go in for sales tax, and then I was able to get my wholesale license all in one swoop, so I don't have to pay sales tax on any items for resale. Uh, Road Warrior Reseller is asking, do we have a reseller license? Um, yeah, we both do. Where you can actually go when you source and get um, it tax deductible and stuff like that. So that's definitely worth applying for. Um, I didn't have to put, on, uh, put out any money for mine. So Yeah, it's free. So if, it, if it's free, it's for me. Yep. <laughs> Eric Bischoff says it's surprising how easy it can be to retire or be financially independent early if you understand investing and start early. Yeah, for sure. Completely. Like, you, like even when my kids go to, to college or whatever, they could be sourcing textbooks for me and send them back and I'll split the money with them or whatever. I'll make sure their bank account for college is nice and stacked or whatever. So, yeah, but like even, even at an early age, that's especially why I want to have them have this little trick up their sleeve, basically being able to do this because, you know, just if they can pay off their college with just doing reselling, you know, as they're, they're at college versus going and working at a university job or, you know, flipping burgers or whatever, and they can actually make some decent money because I'm sure there's plenty of opportunities as a college student to make money. Probably a lot of it will be on like something like Facebook Marketplace if that's still a thing when my kids go to school, you know. So, Brandon asks, uh, "What mics do you two have? Any other content creators in the chat?" Me and Anthony both have uh, just the ones on our. They're built into our laptops. Hold on a sec, guys. I want to get a, a, a separate mic. Uh, I just haven't haven't set it up yet. It's the same one that um, Cliff has. It was uh, a little over a hundred bucks. Has the the swing arm, so it looks all professional. Has like the thing that has goes against that filter. It's this way when you say like your peas or whatever, it doesn't like like hit the bass in someone's ear while we're talking and everything. But that was pretty cheap. It was a pretty nice setup, though. I just haven't connected it yet. I, I want to get everything situated first because I might move my desk, and I just don't feel like doing it again.
Eric, so you don't necessarily need a resale license certificate depending on the state. I mean, um, yeah, there's some states that, you know, you just have to show your, you know, your, your license or whatever. Like, uh, I know when I was signing up for, um, you know, everything, I was watching a lot of videos to make sure that, you know, I, I knew what I needed cash wise, the that how much my fees were. And the one I watched for wholesale, or no, for, I'm sorry, my resale license was, if I was like a drop shipper or something, which I thought was, you know, it gave me what I needed. It just gave me a little bit more. So say I would buy something on uh, walmart.com and I shipped it to, you know, uh, California or something like that. Um, some places you would need a separate research license for that, that's that state, but some of you don't. Later, CJ. Have a good day, buddy. Yeah, uh, Matt from B BK Vending and Flipping says that his son Logan has a Roth RA and he's 11. Yeah, I mean, that's 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 amazing to have that set up already and being so young. I mean, he's 11, so what, what money does he really need? And if he's doing a little bit of reselling to fund it himself, I mean, it, it's free money that he, you're letting his, his money work for him by just sitting there and, and collecting. And right now, the, from what I understand, the stock market and stuff are doing pretty good. So, oh, it was his idea. That's awesome. The one thing that, um, if anyone's looking to do wholesale, um, a lot of the companies that you'll deal with, once a EIN number, uh, resale license, stuff like that, the reason why some of them require it and some don't, I'm not saying this for everyone, but a lot of people, a lot of companies might be a little shady. It might be something that looks like it's good and everything's going everything, but you actually want to make sure that the, the company that you're working with asks for those type of licenses. It's a little bit of a pain in the butt, but having to set it up, but once you get it set it up, it's pretty, uh, pretty easy to work with. Now there's a there's a wholesale license where Scott where you go to um, I think it's like PA dot one hundred dot gov or something like that I can't remember what it is but uh, um, you can apply for a you know a wholesale license and then with that like if you go to Walmart or you order something online that that would be taxed before the business you know, that you're going to, to resell or whatever the case may be, um, you don't have to pay that tax on it. So therefore you're going to save for anything in Pennsylvania. Well, I guess depending on where you're at, I guess six and 7%, depending if you're buying in, you know, Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh, I think 7% in my area in Westmoreland County, it's 6%. So it's just extra money that you, uh, that you save. Yeah, at least so you're right. You're definitely right. Your sole proprietor, you, if you're a sole proprietor, your EIN is your social security number. Yeah, that's for sure. But you want to make sure you have, you know, they're going to ask, they're going to want you to have a business EIN for the wholesale. And then they're also going to want, um, you know, your resale certificate, your wholesale uh, certificate. Gary says he, he's having a hard time getting his, the kids to take up the the trash. And uh, BK vending and flipping's uh, kids are got R, Roth, Roth R A accounts. Cindy, you're one thousand percent right. That's why, I like with work, they had a they had an opening with the new company that uh, purchased us. 
and they were saying that if we bought stock, um, I think in January, they would give us a 15% uh, discount. And if you look at my company's like um, growth in the last six months, it went up like $15, $20 a share. So I think a lot of that, for example, with that was just them purchasing uh, the company I work for and you know, of course the stock market just really really being being good, but uh, Yeah, I, I, I think it's all gonna come to the to an end and get in a recess at some point Yeah, there there is companies that do that. There was a lawyer, I think, like Rocket Lawyer, that had something up like that too. But yeah, just make sure you're going through your state um, companies. Like you can, if you wanted to, you can pay uh, someone at like I think it was Rocket Lawyer or something like three hundred dollars, and they'll have everything sent in and do everything for you. But I mean, for me, and this will vary by state, by county, by everything. For me to get everything I needed, it was 125 bucks. So, uh, like I said, it it could vary from state to state. It could be more uh, for sure. I don't know if it'd be any cheaper anywhere else. But if you go on the IRS website, your EIN is free. Uh, for me, my wholesale license was free. Um, the only thing I had to pay for was uh, 125 bucks to the state uh, to get my state uh, tax ID. West Bank Gary said, Eric, you're right. The recession will hit soon. All this stuff is going to China, like going on in China right now. Yeah, that might have been it, uh, Brandon. Legal Zoom. That was another one. I think it was Rocket and that one, I'm pretty sure. But honestly, it's not hard to, to set up. I mean, I, I did it, I think it was an hour and a half. And uh, the wholesale license took a couple of days to get approved because I did it on a Friday. So I didn't get that until Monday. And then once you get all of your stuff back from, uh, they usually send in an email like that you're approved and everything like that. Then you take that and go to, you know, your local bank or whatever, and you're able to set up a bank account. But it's just that you, have, you just have to make sure that the same uh, process that you did to search your name, um, it shows up on that state site before you can get your bank account. That's at least what... Uh, my local big bank, uh, PNC Bank, said to me or whatever. See you there, Matt. BK Vending Flipping he says, got to run, guys. Thanks so much. You've been time. Please check out the premiere in a couple hours. And then he dropped the link. So, guys, make sure to click on that and uh, hit a reminder for that. Matt, I probably won't be able to catch it till, uh a little bit later when I get off work. So, I won't be seeing your premiere, but I'll definitely be checking it out. Cindy said, I try not to send my funds to China. I look for U.S. manufacturers, a good way to find Etsy sellers working, willing to work with you. Yeah, I mean, I try to get as much as I can from the U.S., but there's just so much stuff. It's China. I mean, basically any toy yeah. that you buy is from China. I mean, a lot of different clothing's all from overseas. Like I found one that one. Um, it was like a Hawaiian uh, military shirt or ship. It had ships on it or whatever, and it was from the United States. So that was a, a rare find for me. Sure. Yeah, Ken says, right, once you register with the state, you're good to go, but then talk to a CPA, they will save you tons of money. For sure. I usually do personal taxes, like, when, you know, before I started reselling, I always did my personal taxes. Unless you are really, um, 
you know, you really know what you're doing with that, with your deductions and everything else. I mean, there's a lot more that goes into it. So you're better off just, you know, making sure you have all your right information, all your receipts and stuff that they would need and just hand it over and just, because I mean, the, the, for the cost and, and, and what, how much time it's going to save you and you, you know, you're protected because you're getting it done by a professional, you know, it's, it's kind of like a no brainer to be honest. Yeah, for sure. Nice. Tracy just signed up from Macari. Now he's got the list. Yep. Macari's awesome. Right. Yeah, I got a couple things up there. I'm, I'm waiting for my first sale to come soon. But all right, guys, we're gonna we're gonna shut her down. Make sure to check out uh, BK Vending and Flipping's uh, premiere in a few hours. And uh, we appreciate you coming in today. Tomorrow will be on Anthony's channel, 10 Eastern. Anything you want to say, uh, Anthony? Um, no, the only thing that I really have, um, I'm going to be releasing a video shortly, probably in like the next hour sometime of uh, Super Bowl Sunday vlog that I did with Nate over at Nate's house. So definitely uh, be on the lookout for that. It's short. It'll be like a five-minute video. It's nothing... Nothing, uh, you know, super long, but uh, you do get to see uh, me and the beard hang out and having fun together. There'll be, there'll be more of that coming soon, for sure, because uh, definitely want to go on a couple more sourcing trips. I want to try and do a weekend sourcing trip or something in the future, so yeah. that would be an awesome video. And uh, and soon the meetup. Uh, Cindy, so, I'm not going to be doing a live today. Oh, you mean the Bible study? The Bible study is at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That's on Flip and Hope, which is my second channel. Um, so that's 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time every Tuesday. Um, as far as my Pittsburgh channel that I'm on right now, well, technically I'm on Nate's channel, but I'm endorsing the Pittsburgh channel. Um, that's just going to have a pre-recorded video of Super Bowl Sunday hanging out with Nate. So... You guys will see yeah, we'll, it in the next hour or so. We'll be having a, a live hangout either Thursday or Saturday when I'm off. We'll be going over some of the stuff for the, you know, we want to hear your, definitely your in, input with that, with the uh, reseller meetup. So if you plan on going, please make sure and check out uh, that live coming soon. Uh, I'll probably have a better answer of what day it would be on tomorrow's show. So make sure to tune in for Anthony's channel tomorrow to hear when that's going to happen and uh so we can plan it we can make it as fantabulous as we can so all right everyone we're going to cut it off thank you really really appreciate y'all and see you tomorrow make that money see you guys see you.